Hey everyone, welcome to Pages and Pores, which as you may know is my new name for this channel. My name is Robert, happy Friday. I've decided to make a couple of minor tweaks to my channel, um, including when I post videos. I'm still filming my main video of the week on Friday evenings, this one, but I'm gonna post it tonight instead of waiting till midday tomorrow. The traffic on the weekends just doesn't seem to be very big and I want to tie it back in with what I used to do for many years with Friday Reads, which is just kind of a weekly recap. So I'm starting to call these Friday Reads again. Of course, each one will still focus on one whiskey as I'm talking about the books and I'll post them Friday evenings. On Mondays, I will post probably Monday afternoon, maybe five o'clock or so. I will post my artificial intelligence series uh, video and when that series ends there's only three more episodes when that series ends whatever I do next in a similar type vein will go on Mondays and then th the new tweak really is that I want to do something on Wednesdays people have been trying to convince me to do something with blind tastings and I've kind of resisted for two reasons one is I don't know if I'll <laughs> be able to do anything correctly on a blind tasting um, and two, I also, living alone, it's, it's hard to fool yourself what you've poured in a glass. And I, I've joked repeatedly that my dog spills too much when he pours for me. But I think what I'm going to do is I have ordered a bunch of little brown sample bottles, so I can't see what's in the bottle. And I'm going to pour a bunch of samples from the bottles already in my collection. So theoretically, they are whiskeys that I've had before, maybe just once, but I've had before and own. So it limits the field to whatever I happen to own. But I have a lot of bottles of whiskey. And so I'm going to get together, I don't know, 75 to 100 samples. And then once a week for a Wednesday video, I'm just going to draw a sample randomly. Uh, I won't know what's in it. I'll taste it, uh, smell it, try to figure out what it is. Um, I'm not necessarily any good at guessing proof, but I may take a stab at that too. The main thing is, can I tell whether it's a, a scotch or a bourbon or a rye or you know Japanese or something like that? And then maybe just give you a little bit of whether I like it or not and whether when that bottle is gone, whether I'll replace it or just let it slip out of my collection. I apologize if in the background you hear some rumbling. We are having thunderstorms this evening. No real storms, but a little bit of thunder. Um, and I want to post those on Wednesdays. And I would like your opinions on what to call that. I posted in my Instagram story today a little call for help. And I posted on the community tab a post on my YouTube channel with the same thing that I would like some help choosing a name for that series that's simple, so it, it's easy to fit into a, a thumbnail for YouTube. Uh, it's one that's easy to remember. I was thinking something as simple as Whiskey Wednesday Blind Tastings. Um, but if you have any better ideas, I am completely open to that because I'm not really good at picking names for things. As you can see how long it, I struggled to figure out what to do with pages and pours. So that's what eventually, in the next couple of weeks, once I get that sample set up ready, I'll be posting three videos a week again, which I haven't done in years. So we'll see. I'll probably film all three of them in one day. It'll be a long Friday night video session. Okay, this bottle, this beauty, first of all, thank you so much, Holly. Um, I've been hunting this bottle ever since I first tried Glen Scotia 15 and decided I liked it. And then I found out that last year, Glen Scotia Victoriana won the online Scotch Whiskey Awards Whiskey of the Year. And then I realized, of course, it's unavailable anywhere near me. But I started doing some research and discovered that there are some pockets of the country that have this available. Uh, Total Wine has it in some places. And Holly just happened to be in a place where her local Total Wine had it on the shelf and she snagged a bottle for me and was kind enough to um, 
send it to me. Uh, so I'm really pleased to have this. I tasted this. If any of you all caught my appearance on SLB Drinks with Kurt, I tasted this on his channel. He had a bottle too and thought it was just wonderful, but it's hard to tell from a single taste. So I'm glad to have it. I have not opened it yet. I've been kind of waiting to open it on a video. And so this will be a a fresh bottle crack and they say that first pour out of a bottle is sometimes a little wonky and not really to trust it but got to drink the first pour to get to the second pour so here we go see if i can do this without spilling yeah decent cork pop all the glug glugs oh i did it without spilling nice uh Glen Scotia is a Campbelltown distillery uh, and Victoriana is a celebration of their long history, the Victorian era, when Campbelltown was considered the whiskey capital of the world. There were, I think, more than 30 distilleries in Campbelltown at the time. Now they're just a handful uh, and their stuff is very good. It's hard to find in the United States, especially, uh, and it's a little bit pricey. This runs right now, if you can find it at Total Wine, depending on where you live, it'll be between $90 and $110. Um, it is cask strength. It's 54.2% alcohol by volume. So if you are into the proof system instead of the al alcohol system, that's 108.4 proof which is not super high proof, but it's, you know, it's, it's full strength. Um, what, what they've done to make this whiskey is they've gone back to the Victorian common practice of recharring the barrels before they put their whiskey into them to age. Uh, that's not often done. Even today, that's not always done in Scotland. They'll, they'll pour them into ex bourbon barrels or ex sherry casks and let them age and absorb some of those flavors but they've taken the american oak barrels and recharred them and then poured their whiskey in and aged it that way uh, it's non-chill filtered of course natural color uh, it's a classic campbelltown malt and so i've been looking forward to this for a while and i'm so glad to finally have a, a bottle of it in my cabinet Okay, so aromas first off, um, I get vanilla right away, which you expect with an ex-bourbon barrel, especially one that's been newly charred. I get vanilla, I get some fruit. I don't know if it's like orchard fruits. Maybe there's a little apple influence in there, I'm not really sure, but I, I, I definitely smell the fruit sweetness and Typical of most Campbelltown scotches, there's this seaside, sea salt uh, influence that I absolutely think is wonderful. So I love that. That is just delightful. Cheers, everybody. The beautiful thing about cask strength whiskeys, if the um, the alcohol, the ethanol doesn't burn you up or turn you off, is that it's such a rich explosion of flavors. Whereas if you're drinking a whiskey that's 40% ABV, the bare minimum, it always seems a little thin. You get a flavor or two, but you don't get the whole wide range and depth of flavors that you do in cask strength. And this is just gorgeous. Hmm. Glen Scotia, Springbank, um, Kilcarran. Springbank also does the long row peated line and um, the Hazelburn unpeated line. I have not found one from Campbelltown yet that I don't think is just a terrific bottle. There aren't enough of them, but I think they're all really amazing. I am, I am a big Campbelltown fan. Love that. Okay, what else is going on? Um, this has been 
a big day and a half for my football club. Uh, two pieces of news that basically broke yesterday and today. The first involves uh, the women's team at Newcastle United. They were not actually legally under the Newcastle United Football Club umbrella when the takeover occurred 18 months ago, November of a year and a half ago. Um, one of the things that the owners vowed to do was to build up the women's program as well and treat them as an equal part of the club. And the first thing they did was they brought them into the legal umbrella of Newcastle United Football Club. And then they pumped some money into their facilities and into their staff. Uh, they've actually played a couple of their league games at St. James's Park to massive crowds. I think there was 28,000 people came to the last one that they played there, which for a Division Four women's team in the northeast of England is pretty impressive. Um, but then last year they won the league and got promoted. Now this year they'll be in the third division. But just yesterday, it was announced that as of now, the women's team is full-time professional. So the women who have been trying to split time between school and, and playing or jobs and playing can now just concentrate on their, their playing and their training and they'll be paid for it. And so it's really exciting news for the club. Everything you hear usually is about the men's team, but it's really exciting to see the owners coming through on their promise to support the women's team and build that program up. So I was very happy to see that news. The second piece of news is we signed, well, it's all but signed. Uh, the agreement between Newcastle and AC Milan has been finalized for uh, Sandro Tonali, their hotshot 23-year-old midfielder. We've been needing some extra help in midfield for most of last year. We were very thin and we were one injury away from disaster a couple of times. Tonali is just, I mean, he plays for the Italian national under 21 squad, even though he's 23. There's some funny rules about things like that. He is um, already the captain of that squad. He is just beloved by the AC Milan fans until today. Um, he's just a banger and I, so excited to hear it came the deal came out of nowhere newcastle has gotten so much better about not talking about what they're trying to do until it's all but done uh, and this deal came through and they signed it uh, i think the deal is 70 million euros so 60 million pounds which isn't our largest signing but it's in that same ballpark um, so that's our first major summer signing which is very exciting because it's kind of seen as a statement signing that they went after somebody from AC Milan who was in the semifinals of the Champions League this year. So very happy about that. I'm going to see them next month down in Atlanta. They're on a preseason tour with five other Premier League teams up and down the eastern coast. And I'm going to see them in Atlanta. So that's going to be fun. So that's good news. Um, what else is going on? I mentioned to you last time that I'm going next week i'm going down to or is it down across up i get confused sometimes i'm going to kentucky uh, i used to live in lexington kentucky i used to teach at the university of kentucky and at georgetown college um well i was in graduate school while i was writing my dissertation at penn state i was actually teaching in kentucky because that's where my ex got her first job and I am going to the Maker's Mark distillery for their uh, distillery tour. I have never been on a full-blown distillery tour before, so I figured it's time. And Maker's Mark is perfect choice for me because Maker's Mark was my first introduction to whiskey. Um, I still like their whiskey, so I'm, I'm anxious to, to go see what their tour's like. I've heard that their campus is absolutely just gorgeous. I'm looking forward to that. So that's next week. Uh, everything else is going on. I guess that's about it. So let's talk about some books. I have kind of put reading, I had put Booth on hold a little bit. I'm almost halfway through, but I had to stop because my live stream on Wednesday, I was supposed to read The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn again, and I had forgotten about it until a week after I had intended to start. And so I put everything aside and read that desperately. So I finished this Wednesday morning for my Wednesday evening live stream. Uh, if you that that has been recorded and is available in my uh, channel. So if you want to go back and see my thoughts on the adventures of Huckleberry Finn, you're welcome to do that. Uh, the next live stream, the July live stream, 
will be on um, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Not very long, much beloved. Uh, as I mentioned on my live stream, the last time I read it, I was a little disappointed in it. And I don't know if it's just because I wasn't in the mood for Oscar Wilde at that particular occasion or if my tastes have changed, but it seemed to me he was working too hard to be clever. And I just got kind of annoyed with the constant, you know, attempts to be clever. Just, he's naturally clever. He doesn't have to work so hard at it. But it is an interesting story. So I'm looking forward to rereading that to see if I still have that impression now, some 15 years since the last time I read it. I've never actually taught this novel, so I've only read it twice. The other thing going on is both books and football related. Um, there's a group that started a couple years ago um, with either the European Championships or the Men's World Cup. We've done it two or three times now. They did one, I think, for the African Cup of Nations, which I didn't take part in because none of those games were broadcast where I am. And for me, half the fun is seeing the games. But the Women's World Cup starts July 20th, I believe. It's the third week of July. And the group is doing it again. What they do, they have a readathon. Um, each person who signs up for the readathon is randomly assigned one of the 32 teams in the field. This year I have Spain. And the way it works is you pick out something to read from your country. It can be a novel, it can be nonfiction, it can be poetry, short stories. Some people are reading children's books. You, cho you choose. I decided since it's the Women's World Cup, I wanted to focus on women's authors this year for this. Uh, and so the book that I've chosen happened to be one that I had in my stack already at home um, from the translated division of the Book Two Prize a year ago, but I never got a chance to read it. And that's when I sing Mountains Dance by um, Irene Sola, and it's translated from the Catalan by Mara Fay Lethem. I don't know much about it. I know it's set in the Pyrenees in Catalonia. Uh, it's kind of a magical realism tale, a fantasy tale um, that uses politics as a backdrop, but is mostly about family secrets from what I understand. It's only about 200 pages long, so it's a quick read from what I understand, but I'll be reading that for Spain. Now, the way the challenge works is that uh, if you don't know how the World Cup is structured, each of the 32 teams is put into a group of four teams, there are eight groups of four. It's very similar to the book two prize format. Um, and they play each of the other teams in the group, in the group stage. And then the two teams that have the best record from the group stage advance into the knockout phase and the other two teams are eliminated. Then it goes into a knockout phase where you play one team and whoever's the winner advances, whoever loses goes home. And th the way the the challenge works is every time your team plays a game, if your team loses, you're supposed to read something from the country of the team that beat your team. So if Spain loses their first game, I'm not even sure who they play first, um, I would have to read something from the country that beat Spain. I remember for the Men's World Cup, I drew North Macedonia. <laughs> the, I think it was the lowest ranked team in the entire field. I may be wrong, but it was pretty close and everybody expected them to lose all their group stage games and they didn't. They actually beat the champions. I think they beat uh, Argentina in the group stage, which was a huge surprise. Um, but then when your team eventually does get knocked out, unless it goes on to win the whole thing, when your team gets knocked out, you adopt the team that knocked you out and they become your team. So if Spain gets knocked out in the group stage, one of the two teams that advances out of the group will become my new team. And I'll, I'll stay with them until they get knocked out of the tournament and then keep adopting. I think with the men's tournament, every team that I had after the group stage got knocked out until the final round. So I had a lot of teams for the men's competition, but that means you get to experience a lot of different uh, works. So it's kind of fun. If you're interested in joining, I believe they're still taking participants. There's no real set limit on that. Um, I will put the links to the four hosts, their channels below, and you can pull up one of their channels and look at their introductory video on the, the reading challenge and they will assign you a team. Um, they're, they're holding this year's event 
because it's gotten so much bigger in terms of the number of people taking part, we've outgrown Voxer basically. So this year it's on Discord, which is new for me. I've resisted Discord as long as I could, but now I have to do it. So I signed up for Discord. I figured out a little bit about how to get around in it, but they're holding it on Discord. There's lots of different discussions. There's a, a discussion for each group. There's a discussion for just football in general. There's a discussion about all sorts of things suggestions for books if you don't have any idea what to read for a specific country lots of people have suggestions so it's a lot of fun if you're interested contact one of the hosts they'll give you a link to the discord and they'll draw a country for you and you can join in on the reading challenge uh, i think that's all i have this week covered reading covered my travels covered the whiskey which is so good covered the, the changes in my channel schedule. Um, I think we're done here. I'll let the class go home early tonight. I hope you had a great week. Hope you have a great weekend. Hope you have something great to drink, whether it's coffee, tea, lemonade, whiskey, beer, whatever is your beverage of choice, enjoy. I hope you have something great to read and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Cheers, everybody.